The opinions and views expressed in this podcast do not reflect the views of HTT Media Group. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, lovelies, and thanks again for tuning in to Listen Closely. If you haven't already, please follow me on Facebook, where I'll be posting all things related to the topics of each episode, as well as merchandise and many other different things. So without further ado, please sit back, relax, and listen closely. Hello, my lovelies. So today we're going to be talking about Thomas Jefferson Red Goldman. Who? <laughs> One more time. Thomas Jefferson, aka Red Goldman. Okay. He was a legendary outlaw born and eventually killed here in this area. Really? Yes. And in fact, he was quite possibly Texas's uh Public enemy number one. Wow. Mm. Mm. So, TJ, as we'll call him from now on, was born in January 9th, 1909, near Kuntz. Uh, he had kind of a rough life. His mother, obviously, back in the 1900s, was a homemaker, while his father was in and out doing work. Right. So, he was always kind of a little bit of a troublemaker growing up. But at 18 years of age, he joined the oil field as a roughneck uh, who was actually known for fighting, and especially the day of or after payday. So I'm guessing there was alcohol involved. There was alcohol involved. (laughs) We still do that, by the way. We do. Uh, Well, well, I don't. Well, we don't, but roughnecks do. (laughs) Some do. Some do. I mean, we... Not classifying anybody. No. Yeah. By all means. Okay, so as a oil field roughneck, he, you know, moved to different locations. He moved where the work was. Right. So he went here in Texas, New Mexico, and even Oklahoma for work. Uh, he is also supposedly said to have done moonshining at some point, but okay. I could actually not find anything on that. I don't okay. know if that was during his heydays of an outlaw or when, but that's just a little something people said that he uh, might have dabbled in. Okay. But in uh, January 13th, 1939, at Corpus Christi, uh, he was arrested and charged with a fellow with a fellow oil field worker for murder of another fellow oil field worker. Hmm. And the body was actually found in uh, New Nueces River? Nueces? I don't really know how to say it. Nueces? Thank you. Nueces. There you go. Nueces. That's bad because I'm I'm the Hispanic here and I don't <laughs> I don't know how to say it. That's that's kind of sad, but yes, he was the body was found in Nueces River, and he was subsequent subsequently. Ooh, I can't say anything. Subsequently, thank you. He was charged. I got you he was arrested and charged with the murder along with a uh, fellow worker. However, they were released on bond, and both of them failed to appear hmm. back in court. Now, the other guy did eventually get uh, picked up, but TJ was on the run. Of course he was. So, for three months, nobody knew where exactly he was, but he later appeared in Hull, Texas, where he, and again, an accomplice, robbed the Hull, Texas, or the Hull State Bank. Uh, and his accomplice was named Francis Elva Smith. They got some weird names going on. <laughs> So when you say whole, you're talking about like whole De Zeta, like that whole? Is that what we're talking about? H U L L? Yes, H U L L. Okay. Whole Texas. Okay. Uh, so what had happened was they locked two women employees of the bank in the vault and got twelve thousand dollars cash. Which, if you bring that to today's money, is roughly about two hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars i was about to say that's a lot of money back then yes it was a lot of money and they fled um supposedly another um 
customer came in and was, you know, hello, hello, anybody here? Man, now would be a great time to get robbed because obviously I can't get service. Right. And obviously when he said that, the women heard him and started banging on the vault to get out. Huh. So he heard them banging. He quickly ran to get authorities where they got them out. They um, told him what happened and somehow figured out that it was um, TJ and his, again, accomplice. His accomplice again. His accomplices aren't that bright. They get caught a lot. So Francis got caught, whereas TJ was on the run. By this time, the government was pretty, pretty agitated. Yeah. That he has gotten away twice. He's skipped out. He's 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 a good he's a fast guy. Like they can't catch him. Yeah. They knew that he had relatives in the area, so they quickly told the relatives, "Hey, just to let you know, it's kind of illegal to harbor uh, runaway, suspected killers. You know, outlaws. Like you're going down for him. Just so you know." So some relatives that he was staying with in Houston ended up uh, telling on him. And said, yeah, okay, we have him. You know, we don't we don't want to get caught. We don't want any trouble. So he was caught in Houston but with his relatives who took him to Liberty County where the uh, incident occurred. And you'll never guess what happened. What happened? Again, he bailed out. Of course. Or I'm sorry, bonded out. He bonded, bonded out. Yeah. And fled yet again. So at that time, obviously, Liberty, Texas, he's in the area. Yeah. So East Texas folks were terrified. Right. Because, you know, you've got this uh, suspected killer, a uh, robber. Right. In the area at large. Right. And not only that, but, you know, we know he's armed. You yes. know he'll do anything he needs to do to escape. Mm-hmm. Like, including if that means having to take a life. And he actually, so, so Goldman, uh, TJ, thought... They thought that he had committed several crimes. They could only okay. pin a couple on him. Like, they know for sure he did right. some. But they've thought he did way more than what he was actually uh, brought up as. And this was this was early 1900s, correct? Yes, so this 1900s. was this was not necessarily what you would call the Western Frontier days. This was... Things were starting to boom. Right. The industrial... It was, you know... And he was in the city, so... I mean, like I said, 19... Oh, what was it? Let me see. He I mean, was born was, in 1909. Yeah, yeah, so... So, like, these are about the 1920s, 1930s. Right, like, like that that's... This is going on. That's when my grandfather was born. Yeah. So, hmm. Like, um, but he was uh, said to have committed, obviously, robbery, kidnapping, okay. murder... Of course. And as well as other things. Hmm. So, one account is he robbed and shot a Beaumont taxi driver and stole the cab. Really? Yes. <laughs> they later found the cab Golly. Uh, in the big thicket. Huh. Just abandoned. Yeah. Again, no TJ. Hmm. He also uh, robbed and kidnapped a man, but the man was pretty cunning himself, and he said, look, I'm pretty fed up with life, too. Right. I know of a bank in Dayton hmm. that we can rob together. Okay. Like, you and me, we can do this. We can rob it, and we'll both go our separate ways with our uh, with our half. Right. TJ thought about it for a while. He was like, you know what? That sounds like a deal. Sure. That, that's fine. So they spent the whole day scheming how they were going to do this. More money, yeah. They eventually decided that they'd meet up at the tracks right outside of Dayton. And they went their separate ways. The uh, man, uh, we don't have a name for him, but he, right. of course, was kidnapped. So he's like, you know, he's he's free. Right. Like they decided that they were going to be at the tracks. He's free. Go straight to the police. Makes Tell sense. them exactly what the plan is and where they're going to be. So you had several um, police from all over. It wasn't just, you know, one or the other. It was Harden, Liberty, like all of them right. got together and went to Dayton. Okay. And so uh, the man waited by the tracks as they had uh, agreed upon while the police kind of waited around in the area at a distance and watched hmm. and waited. 
and waited and waited. No, he never showed up. He never showed up. Hmm. He kind of got a, a odd feeling that this yeah. was not going to go down how they agreed. So he decided to skip out hmm. and was a no-show. So he was on the run again. And so the cops, obviously, so fed up with him. All the, all the torment, they're like, you know what? We, we got to catch him. We're, we're done. Like, he's making a mockery of us. We can't, we can't get him. Right. Like, he is, he's, he's like a fox. Which might be why they call him Red, actually. Now that I think about it. Hmm. I, it never really said how he got the name Red. But it might be, it might be his temper. Yeah. Because he was a fighter. But it might also be because he was so cunning like a fox. It could be. I don't know. But anyways, the, uh, the cops got fed up. And they decided, we're, we're going to find him. So they actually put uh, several police on his family. Because they knew he was in the area. And right. obviously he was getting aid from somebody. So they strategically put certain officers on certain family members. And they staked them out. The grandmother went to the store where she bought um, overalls. Okay. And a couple of groceries. And I believe some men's shoes. Hmm. And left. Just so... Left. So they're like, we got him. We know where she, where he's going to be at. He's with the grandmother. Right. Who lived in the big thicket somewhere. I can't exactly get where she was, but she was somewhere in the big thicket. Okay. So, I mean, they didn't follow her that day, but they formulated a plan. They all went in and uh, went to her property. On that property, there's her house and there, there's a barn. She saw They saw her walking... With, you know, some bags at one point, or a bag, what they, I believe, said was groceries, to the barn. And in the barn, they saw a light. And she went in, and then walked out, with no bag. Hmm. So somebody was in the barn. Right, she was feeding somebody. Oh, yeah, she was feeding somebody. So, the police, you know, after seeing everything, they, they formulated the plan. They said, you know what, we're going in, we're done. So they call out to TJ. You know, like all police do. Yeah, come this, out with your hands up. You know, you, you know, know, this is the police. We have you. There's nowhere to run. You are surrounded. Right. Like, come out, surrender. We won't kill you. And at this point, they were so fed up that it was actually, they told the cops, like, you know, the higher up said, we don't care. If you have to shoot to kill, shoot to kill. Hmm. Because he is so cunning, he will get out of this somehow. So they had orders by any means necessary to get him. Right. So, of course, um, TJ being TJ, we're not going to go out with a fight. Yeah. So it's not said who shot first, but there was a shot. And then when that shot happened, the place erupted. Hmm. Like, uh, I don't... Hey, like, hails of gunfire. Hails of gunfire. Like, Bonnie and Clyde, like, they right. shot everywhere. Like... They they emptied all their ammunition right. guns. You like go back. Gone. You go back to those like old mobster movies where they've got a Tommy gun and they're just you know. I mean, but they didn't have Tommy guns at the time. Right, right. But, but that's yes, what I'm saying. Like, like just, they they emptied them. Doesn't matter what they're shooting at, they're gonna shoot. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't exactly know where in the barn he was. They just knew he was in the barn, so they were shooting like right. everywhere. Okay. Um. Obviously, they got him. They finally heard a thud where he dropped, so, you know, they stopped. They started to advance where they found his body. Hmm. And inside the barn, they found so much ammunition and guns, like, if he could have got to his stash. Because he, he did have a gun. He shot. Yeah, yeah. But if, they, if he would have been able to continue, he could have very well have won that fight. Oh, absolutely. Well, now you know what he's doing with all that money. Mm. <laughs> like he was he was fully prepared yeah to have it all out but unfortunately him being one man and the you know the cops decided you know what we're done we're gonna send like you know 20 30 men out there like he he didn't have a chance right well it was such a spectacle that um kind of like bonnie and clyde everybody heard tj's down yeah tj's down oh my gosh tj like the Thomas Jefferson Goldman is down. So people rushed over 
to his uh to where he was shot up right and they wanted to get a look at him they wanted to get a picture they wanted to get a momentum like just like bonnie and clyde when they got shot and everybody rushed same thing yeah like it he he was a big deal i mean like you said i mean this is this is the guy they called you know i mean i don't know if they called him this but like the you know texas public enemy number one yeah he was he was the real deal yeah like he he had to go according to the cops like he had to go right um and the cops being very proud of themselves took several pictures oh wow and uh i do have some pictures of the barn that was shot up Mm mm-hmm um, some shoes and other items that were found there, as well as a picture of some cops posing with the body. Really? Yes, that is actually on the internet. Um, I'll post some of them on my page at HTT. Listen closely. There you go. Uh, on Monday, and you can see the pictures of the legend Thomas Jefferson Red Goldman. But they, yeah, they they were proud. So, so a couple things about that story that, you know, just from reading, um, I mean, you were correct because they actually called him the notorious red fox of the big thicket. See, I figured. So. Yeah. Because, I mean, he, because he knew the big thicket in and out, like the, it's, it's dense. So they, they couldn't flush him out. Like anywhere they thought he was, he was always a step ahead of them. Right. Like even like the guy who was like, okay, Hey, I have a plan that I'm gonna meet him by the tracks. He was already a step ahead of you. Like, no. I'm not dumb enough to go there. You're probably already telling the cops. Right. I mean, so he he was very cunning. In in the words of somebody on one of these things, every fox knows his trap. Oh yeah. So. And that's um, why they couldn't they could never get him because he was so elusive. And they thought, okay, maybe we have his hideout now where he's with you know ex relative. He was already gone. So okay, so he died. Yes. Um. He in the hell of gunfire. He mm-hmm. was killed. Um. He. You said his family was from Hardin County. So, question, was he buried around here or was he buried somewhere else? He was buried here. Where? Where? Okay, so actually, we're getting a little ahead. He had oh, okay. a huge funeral. Really? Huge. For an outlaw? For an outlaw. Because he was an outlaw. Huh. Everybody from Louisiana to upper, like, uh, Tyler area, Jefferson, I believe, wow. like, up there, all the way to here, to even South Texas and Corpus Christi came to his funeral to get one last glimpse of the outlaw huh yes and then and then get this after he passed away his family charged people to see where the famous infamous red goldman was gunned down by the cops really Mm mm-hmm so for let's say a couple cents you can see where he was gunned down and they even left like his shoes there. Really? So that you could see, you know, the infamous outlaw's shoes that he mm-hmm. was wearing. That's so. that's I mean, so I get it. Like but my question is I'm guessing the uh they found the money. So, uh when he was at the Hull State Bank Right. And he got captured. He actually, you know, when they brought him back from Houston to Liberty, he said, right. look, you know, if they, they didn't want to bond him out. But he's like, look, I'll show you where some of the money is. And, you know, like, I'm going to face the music like a man. Right. That's actually like, he was like, I'm done for. Like, I'm, yeah, you've got me. I'm done. Yeah. You I'll win. give you the money. So he took him to a remote location. And from there, he dug some money up. Um, I don't remember how much. It wasn't the full amount. Okay. Um, it was, I don't I believe like 2000 or something like that. I don't remember the exact hmm. amount. But it was only a small portion of what he actually had. And he's like, look, this is all. My partner took the rest or, you know, we spent it. Smart man. And so they're like, okay, well, you know, we've built trust now. You've given us the money back. And that we'll could be not out. a lie because, like you said, he had a great deal of ammunition. Yeah. Well, I'm sure, like... Back then, you know, because it was it was a little bit more difficult to get ammunition back then because they didn't have huge factories making ammunition. So yeah. I'm sure that, you know, that ammunition was kind of pricey. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure he did spend a great deal on oh, ammunition yeah. and guns and stuff. And just supplies in general. Right. Because he was living out in the big thicket. They said he was 
supposedly living off of just the berries and the natural uh, food that the Big Thicket has to offer. Huh. But, as we know with his grandmother, he did get supplies right. from select friends and family members. So did so none of them went to jail for harboring a fugitive? No. Oh, nobody okay. else went to jail as far as I could uh, okay. see on my research. Nobody else went to hmm. jail. But, okay. back to the burial. Yeah. So he was buried... At Old Harden Cemetery. Hey, I've been there. You have. And that, if you remember, is where we said the Old Harden Courthouse once stood. Correct. Was in that area somewhere. Huh. So, yeah, he was he was buried out that way. Actually, so I'm wondering, because when we were out there, and I think I mentioned this to you, mm-hmm. that there was, a, there was a rather huge monument. And I said the name, the last name Gozman, um, or what was it? It was... So it's spelt G-O-L-E-M-A-N. Yes. However, his uh, tomb, or not tombstone, we had tombstone, uh-huh. says T.J. Red Goldman, G-O-L-D-M-A-N. Okay. And it's actually just a small little headstone. It says oh, uh, it? 1909 okay. with a cross in the middle. And then 1940, which is when he passed away. And that's all it says? That's all it says. There's no saying or anything? There's no saying. That's all he, uh, the infamous outlaw. It doesn't say Red Fox of the Big Thicket? No. Oh, man. No, that's not what it says. Yeah, he is actually in the uh, Old Hardin Cemetery, which we went. We didn't actually, we weren't looking for him specifically. No, yeah. We were actually looking for people that, you know, like um, of high positions within the coots, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah, when we were researching the Hardin County Courthouse fire and, you know, the location, and it said that uh, between the two cypress trees and the two, uh, which other word was it? It was the two cypress trees and the two oak trees. Yeah, between those two trees were the oldest uh, people there. Right. So we were looking at them, but we actually didn't pay attention to see him. Never would have known. So it was just kind of through my research of looking through other things that I happened to uh, come across TJ. That's pretty cool. Yep. So he he's definitely he's he's it's not a haunting. It's not no. as far as I know it's nothing. But it is a very interesting. You know, 1940s is when he passed away. Like you know, it this was not just a small little area at the time. Like it wasn't you know complete forest or nothing. It was. Well into, you know, the booming, you know, the roaring 20s and right. depression 20s, which again, depression is where most of these outlaws became outlaws was due to the depression. Right. And that's something to say, you know, because he he was 31 years old. He was our age. Yeah. Whenever he got gunned down. Like, this guy wasn't, an, you know, he didn't last that long. Um, but... And, I mean, when he turned 18, it was 1927. Right. So, like, they, I believe they just got out of the Depression around that time? Or they yeah. were, they were like, pretty much in it at that time. I can't remember. I know it was in the 20s when the Depression happened. Man, and, that's that's cool. Um, I'd love to, to find some relatives of his. Cause so, I could not see, as far as my research, I did not see any relatives still in the area or whether or not... Um, he, they had changed their names, you know, because right. if the females carried on the name males, you know, I I couldn't find much. Right. Um, if you go to find a grave, actually, you can see his headstone from there. You can get his father and mother's name. I mean, you can look at his death certificate. Yeah. Which and is weird because they, they yeah, usually like don't. Yeah, they, they have his death certificate. Yeah. And I believe his death certificate says... Uh, Gunned down, or let me see. Hold on, I have it right here. Yeah, it says it says killed in gun battle with company of Hardin in Jefferson County, Texas. Yeah, resisting arrest on April eleventh, nineteen forty. Yeah, and it says the place of occurrence was five miles southwest of Coons, Texas, on a storm. Sour Lake. Oh, Sour it Lake says it Coons. says S O U R M. Yeah, I think that's so. A, Sour Lake and Coons Road. Yeah, and shot by high powered rifle. I mean, so kind of, kind of understatement. That's, kind, I mean, it's it's not an understatement. It's yeah. shot by several rifles. Right. <laughs> like it wasn't just one. But that's that's really cool, and that's I think it's really cool that 
um, that one of the biggest outlaws to come out of Texas was right here in this area. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, you always hear about Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, yeah. You know, you hear about all these other ones. And and this this guy was one of the big ones. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, just, that's just really cool. Um, and, uh, and obviously, if you look at the uh, residence of the deceased, it says no permanent residence. Yeah, because he never... He never lived anywhere. He lived in. Yeah, he, he, lived he, in the big he bounced around. Right. Like he 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 had no permanent residence at all. Yeah. So that's that's crazy. But he was thirty one, three months, and two days old when he passed away. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. Oh, but I do see here it says uh, Agnes Collins was his mom. Yeah. I wonder if there's any relation to the to the ones we know. I don't know. Well, I'll have to ask him and find out. <laughs> um, so, uh, just so you know what we're talking about, on the other show, uh, we have a... So, here's the thing. So, here's the thing, a live talk show. The My co-host is a man by the name of David Collins. So, I'll have to check it out you yeah. know, and see if... Uh, he might be related to the infamous, legendary outlaw of T.J. Goldman. He could be. And not even know it. There you go. So... That's kind of cool. Yeah. Anyways, that's all for this evening in this episode. I hope you enjoyed listening about TJ because I absolutely loved to uh, research this one. It was super fun. Uh, If you haven't had a chance, by all means, you can go visit his grave, pay your respects, kind of see where the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Mr. TJ Goldman, is now currently buried. But as always, if you do go visit any of the places that we talk about, please always remember to be respectful, not only of the graves or the area, but also of the families and um, those who might still be around. Yeah. And that's all for today. So always remember and never forget to listen closely.